Today we will be showing you how to replace the chassis for an HP MSL 4048 and 8096 tape libraries. This replacement will require downtime and it should be scheduled with the system administrator. Please be advised that under no circumstances should you move any hardware other than your tape drives from the faulty library chassis to the replacement. This includes both the control card and the magazines. There are many instances where we have seen one or both of these parts cause issues when moved from a faulty chassis to the replacement. If you move any hardware other than your tape drives from the faulty chassis to the replacement, you may cause irreparable failure to the replacement chassis and void your warranty. The only exception to this is if you have a redundant power supply in your current library chassis. If you have this configuration, you will need to move over your redundant power supply from the old chassis to the replacement in order to keep redundant power. There are a few different reasons that you may have determined you need a replacement chassis for your MSL 4048 or 8096 tape library. The first is if you have repeated robotics errors. The second is if you have communication issues with one or more tape drives and the replacement of those tape drives has not fixed your errors. Once you have determined that you need to replace the chassis, the first thing you will need to do is retrieve all of the unique settings from the library. These will include, but are not limited to, the network settings, dedicated cleaning settings, library mode, etc. You can view these settings from both the front panel of the library or from the web GUI. If you have the web GUI set up for your library, you should also make sure to check for any unique feature activations on your library. These are available only from the web GUI. If you have any of these features activated on your chassis, please stop immediately and do not proceed with the rest of this video. There is a very specific procedure that must be followed in order to bring the activated features over from one library to another. We do not cover that procedure in this video. Please open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal and we will be able to assist you with performing this procedure correctly. If you continue to try and follow the procedure in the rest of this video, you will lose any activated features on your machine. Once you have retrieved all your unique information, you will also need to remove all tapes from the library. The first way you can attempt this is by releasing the magazines through the front panel of the library. If there is a robotics error that persists and prevents you from unlocking the magazines through the front panel, you will need to manually release the magazines once you have the library powered down and out of the rack. We will go over this procedure later in the video, but please keep watching from here. If the magazines do unlock successfully, you will need to pull all tapes out of each magazine and ensure they are all empty before powering down the library. Now you will need to push the power button on the front of the library and start the power down process. You will see this displayed on the front panel. The library should shut itself off after about 10-15 to 15 seconds. If the library has robotics issues that prevent it from performing the shutdown correctly, you may need to go around to the back of the library and pull out the power cords to power the library off. Once the library is powered off, you need to unplug the power cords from the back if they are not already pulled out from the previous step. Then you will need to label all data cables going to the drives with their positions so that they can be reinstalled properly later. Once all data cables are labeled, you can unplug them from the backs of the tape drives and then also unplug the Ethernet cable from the remote management port if there is one installed. Once all cables are disconnected from the library, you will need to remove all tape drives from the rear before you uninstall the library from the rack. To remove the tape drives, loosen the blue thumb screws that hold each drive in and then pull the drive straight back and out of the library. Once all drives are out of the library, move back around to the front of the library to uninstall it from the rack. When in front of the library, you may notice that the library has ears on the front that secure the library to the rack mount kit that it sits on. Not all libraries will have these ears installed. But, if yours does and it is fastened to the rack mount kit, you will need to unscrew the ears from the rack mount kit before continuing. You will need to now uninstall the library from the rack by pulling it straight back and setting it to the side. If you are not able to remove the tapes from the library before powering it down earlier, you will now need to do so. To do this, you will need to push in the manual release lock on each side of the library that is located in the rear where the tape drives were installed previously. While holding the lock in on each side, you need to pull the magazines out partially and then you can release the lock. Do this for each side and then remove all tapes from all magazines before sliding them back into the empty chassis and setting it to the side. Now you are ready to install the replacement chassis. If you bought the replacement chassis from the Rocket Platform website, 
there will be a picker shipping lock installed in the top cover. This will be located underneath a small sticker in the center of the top cover. Upon removing the sticker, you should see a small piece of metal that prevents the picker from moving during transit. This needs to be removed before continuing. If you did not buy your replacement chassis from the Rocket Platform website, you should still double check this location to ensure there is no picker lock in the replacement chassis before proceeding. Please be advised, the MSL 8096 does not have a picker shipping lock like this, so it will only apply to the MSL 4048 chassis. You can now slide the replacement chassis into the rack and secure it with the rack mount screws if you have them. Then go around to the back of the library and install all tape drives into the replacement chassis. To do this, line up each drive with the black guide rails in the empty tape drive bay and slide it in until it makes contact with the back plane of the library. Then push firmly to seat the drive completely and secure it in place by tightening all thumb screws for the drive. Repeat this process for every drive until they are all installed correctly in the library. Now install all data cables going to the drives using the labeling that you did earlier prior to uninstalling the old unit. Also, plug the Ethernet cable into the remote management port on the chassis if there was one installed in the original unit. Last, plug all power cords into the back of the power supplies in the library. Go around to the front of the library and hit the power button once to turn the library on. The library will now initialize. This can take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes depending on if it's a 4048 or an 8096. Once the library is fully initialized, it will display ready on the library status line of the library operator panel. Now you will need to set up your unique information that you retrieved from the faulty unit before uninstalling it. Once you have set up your unique information, you will need to restart the library for all new settings to take effect. At this point, you will need to reinsert all tape cartridges into the library. To do this, use the magazine unlock command from the operator panel of the library to unlock each side's magazines and insert all tapes before sliding the magazines back in. Once all tapes are inserted and the library goes back to a library status of ready, the replacement is complete. You will now need to reconfigure your backup software to be able to use the replacement library chassis. All backup software handles this process differently. For our purposes, since we use Symantec Backup Exec, we simply need to restart the services to allow the tape services to detect the replaced chassis. Your backup software procedure may be different. Any questions should be directed to your software support or manufacturer. If you are still seeing an error on the library chassis after replacing it, or you have any other issues, please open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Thanks for watching. This has been another video by the Top 10 USA video production team. We look forward to sharing more content with you going forward, so please check out our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you get notified whenever we release a new piece of content.